Hello, welcome to this Jason for Beginners course and my name is Nabeet Madan and I will try to you know help you understand Jason in the most basic and simple way. The intention of creating this course is to help anyone who is uh, just who doesn't have, have any understanding of Jason but wants to know and understand it. So that's where this motivation came and uh, in this uh, in in this course, uh, you know, we have planned to cover is uh, understand first what is JSON, and then once we understood the JSON, then it will be like comparing it to XML, how it differs, and what are similarities. Then from there, you will start digging into its syntax, types, what are objects, array, and how do we basically read and modify stuff. So once those are done, we will basically look at some examples. But in you know, it will be mostly a uh, uh, example practical course list for theory more of learn by doing you know we learn by doing things so it's a learn by doing approach so let's get started without wasting further much time so let's first uh, have a look at what is json and and then what exactly it is okay so what is json so it basically stand for javascript object notation Okay, so it's more likely similar to what how we represent objects in JavaScript. The similar way it is, it is to those kind of formats are used here, and it is nothing but a data exchange format. Hold on to this. We'll we'll get into the detail of how does how JSON is in data exchange format. It's lightweight. We'll also see in one of the another example that is when we will compare XML and JSON. That is where we will we'll see that how it is lightweight and it is easily understandable and readable. So, so, so what exactly it is, is it is something just we understand it, it is okay, it's some format of data. Okay, so when suppose there is a client server which interacts, the way you want to send the data to the client, the client needs to interpret it, right? It needs to understand, for example, whether you are sending it rows of table right or whether you are sending it a structure whether you are sending it an array right so it needs to understand that so how do we define that whether it is a table whether it is a it contains single line whether it contains multiple fields so that is what this json format defines okay and it is very easily readable and understandable we'll see through it once we start working with examples so as of now it is uh, it's quite lightweight and easily understandable let's just understand this data exchange format via some illustration so for example we have a, any browser anything which is a client it can be any browser which you feel like and we have a server it can be any node.js asp.net any sav whatever server it is right so normally what happens is that client sends a request and server responds right but the response has to be in a particular format right so the browser will be able to uh, kind of understand that is able to, to use that format and display it right so that response format so that client can understand can be in JSON, right? Which is what we are going to cover here, or it can be an XML also, right? So where you have open tab, close tag, and all this, we are not going to cover XML basics. That is a talk for some other day, but it is, it is that this response, how the response, how your data will be structured is what we are going to talk about, right? So that in, in particular, it will be more about JSON, right? So that's, that's where this, format of data comes in and that's where JSON is used and and it is very easily understandable and readable plus it is lightweight we'll look at that so this we understand okay this is JSON something how we format the data so that my client can understand let's now have a look at uh, two examples so that you understand it in a detailed way on the left hand side what you see is a JSON format okay all Let's not let's let's not think about these curly braces, care brackets. Don't worry, we'll cover them. All I can do is I can read through it that I say that it has entity set, it has three some products, categories, and supplier. Very easily readable. You will understand its meaning also, but as of now, it's very easily able to readable. On right hand side is same response. It is a response from a server, but in a XML way where you can see there's a service open tag, right? And then there's a closure of service, right? And then there is a collection atom title is workspace which is opening and then you see workspace closing 
then there's a title default then you see there's products right the same the products which you see here the same products it they are under the collection so as you can see you know xml one is you know it is readable but it's it's very json is very easily readable right and it is very lightweight if you look at this it just requires these many lines and here you can see so so these both have formats of data right one is uh, json and another is xml and uh, and we expect this uh, uh, the 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 json is the basically lightweight and it is very scalable one so now we had a look at what is json and json versus xml kind of a very simple and straightforward easy comparison i think it makes sense to without wasting further much time we should uh, directly jump to some the next topic which is our syntax data type objects and arrays right and for that uh, i think the easiest way to do out is like uh, let's do it in uh, chrome browser right and i will use developer console where i will you know we'll be using javascript as a language you can use php whatever you're comfortable with important is for us is to understand what is the syntax how does it look like we'll use chrome as well as vs code you can choose as any so before actually so what i will do is let me just bring in uh, the terminal or the vs code here right and we have this is nothing done so far i've just opened a folder named json and all i'm going to create is a file named uh, my file dot json so normally a json file and if you want to have it as json data you will end it with an extension dot json okay so normally uh, since it's an object notation right you can have it as an um, we'll talk about object as well as arrays. So, so, so let's for the timing. All we do is we understand. We we start. We make a curly braces, open and close. What it means is that this is an object. Now, this object is uh, similar to our JavaScript object. Or let me make it bigger. Right here. It is similar to our JavaScript objects. Right or any oops object object oriented object right but object as in where they have properties they can they contain data right only difference is it only contains data but no methods okay so that's the basic difference so json will always contain data but not no no methods like for example you have in your normal class right so let's say that this is an object right and uh, so so this is an object and let's see how do we add this properties to it or let, let me call it as property so that you're able to link it but later i will change it for example uh, what do we take an example let's take an example of a of a employee okay so you so what you have is like we have fields in the table same way what we have is uh, define the fields there and we need to use inverted commas so we say id right and uh, if it is uh, if you want to use a number you just do it without single quotes if you want it in a in a string you can have it something like this or if you want uh, uh, to have uh, it a boolean value you can use true right or false if you want to define it as null, you can use it as a null. Okay. So let's say that there's an employee name ID employee, which is an employee kind of a structure. So left hand side is like a key, and right hand side is like a value. Okay. So this is this is key, this is value, and I say ID is one. Then you put a comma at the end, and then you say name is, for example, Nabit, and uh, then you say company and um, because i work with mobilators so i'll write that name and for example um, i'm a freelancer yes or no i contractor is a better word i think contractor i say false right 
So let's just look at this for a timing. So what I have done is I've defined, uh, if you look at this, it is very similar to like a structure which has multiple fields. One is a key, another is a value. So here I'm using uh, the left hand side is key. This value here it is string. And let me make it as numeric, right? The name is string, company is Mobilitas, contractor is for. So this whole inside a curly braces, it means it is like an object. Okay, and uh, then then there is another type also. Let's sort that also. For example, DOJ, which is date of joining. Let me keep it as null for the time. Okay, so that's how we normally define that this is an ID. How do we define a JSON data? It is it's, 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 this JSON object is very basic. Okay, now the next level is, for example. An employee has its address, right? It has its street, it has its um, city, pin code, and country, right? One way is I can have it something like city, right? And I can say city is Panchkula, where I live, right? And uh, then uh, country is is uh, India. And then uh, let's add the pin code last one and because it is numeric so one three four one zero nine so this is this is one way right so but i think you know that should be something like uh more like an in, inner structure right so instead of this what we can do is we can also have something like uh let me create one more file my file one so that i can compare it to okay so let me open it here and let's just close it. Yeah. So instead of this, we can also have something like uh, address, right? And uh, then then we can have this one. I move. And this one. Okay. So now what I have done is. This whole thing, it is because it's, it's an address is like a combination, right? It is like a it does many things. So that's why rather than having it here, I add it as an address and which is nothing but also internally like a structure and object. So it's like an a curly braces, an object, right? Which contains multiple fields, right? And keys or values or fields. And then in that objects can also contain another objects. It's like these. Right. So now we have an object inside an object. OK, that's perfectly fine. So this is better than this one. Right now, what do we have next? So we explored. We have so far we understood key value. We understood different types. We understood uh, how can we have object inside object and you can also have an object inside an object here also suppose sample and you if you want you can keep make it more nested something like test key and field and value is this so it's like object inside object another level of nesting right so it, it depends on perfectly on how you want to structure your data but it is very easily readable okay so now moving on uh, one thing is okay so before we move on so we we know that employee has uh, master data then it has address which is like object inside object but employee also have salary slips right so which is like multiple entries for example i cannot have something like january 1 january 2020 one salary as as 10 right or at february 2021 as 20 and then uh, then march 2021 as 21 OK, this is how I can have my salary, right? But don't you think this is like this looks because this thing will keep on increasing, right? And each time it keeps on increasing, does it mean that I will always change the structure? No, right? We will not do that. There must be some option to have multiple, multiple, multiple options, multiple salaries, right? Something like uh, where we can specify this is a month and this is a this is a salary. This is a month, this is a salary, this is a month, this is a salary. That's where we have something called as arrays also. So arrays is like when you have a defined structure, but that repeat itself. So how do we do that? So let's say that 
we have this as salary okay and for errors you you use normally square brackets this one right so i have an array now right inside it what i have is month uh, i say jan right and i say let's also add year and we say 2021 and uh, then i will say salary is 10. okay so that's 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 one align item which is and now i want another one so all i need to do is uh, let me just copy paste this and now i have right and this is my cell so now you see what is the difference the difference is that that now what i have done is let me just press save what i have done is that this 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 is not scalable right this is not scalable each time every month every year you have a salary you will add one more field no so what you have is in case you have repetitive rows with a definite structure they can be a different some structure can be different also but let's assume it is the same one for example in this case you can put it as an array so this square bracket means an array and this curly braces means an array of objects right so we have these two objects which are inside this okay so what we have seen till now is we understood what different types are there these are primitive one then we understood okay if these are primitive ones uh, okay we added i think address under address i added the salary i think that doesn't make sense now it makes sense i will add the comma don't forget this comma now it makes sense right let me just format it here yeah. so address so once we have basic type then i introduce that okay this is an object but an object can also have inside an object so that's where we have it then we said that what about multiple line items that's where we bring in the arrays right and then inside arrays we have objects and this also can have an inside can have an array also for example i can have it uh, something like this also so it's all how do you want to structure but isn't it very easily uh, readable right so it's pretty easily and it's, it's pretty easy and it's readable right you can very easily read it so this is about uh, the basic concepts of types of objects and arrays right but then the question comes as okay that uh, if the, but how do we read it how do we kind of uh, access these values so for that what we will do is we will we will we will use so we can do it here also but for that i don't want to do that setup so that you have to also do it right so i want to use the most basic setup which is we will use the chrome developer console so we'll move towards chrome developer consoles and see how do we basically read and kind of modify those these access these uh, javascript uh, object notation data which is json so now we have understood uh, how do we define our json how do we define its object properties how do we define uh, arrays how do we define nested objects or arrays inside arrays also or arrays inside objects also but the question is how do we how do we access them so let's let's go and have a look at that so if i this is my simple browser chrome you can open any any browser and if you click on these three dots click on more tools you go or go to developer tools so this is what your typically developer console is i will not go into details of how it works because that is altogether a different big topic so for us our focus will be on console okay so what we will do is we'll try to see how do we access this json data using javascript okay so what i will do is i will declare uh, two two objects one is this one is this and then we'll see how do we access them okay so let me just copy this and i will call it as uh, var uh, my detail is equal to this okay and another will be my detail multi multiple because i have multiple salary slips just to distinguish them so i will have these two so now if you look at let me just clear it if you look at uh, employee 
not employ my detail you see this this is an object which is which contains all of our fields right and then if you look at this this is object which contains our another field this this care is bracket then curl is an object inside so for example same goes for address okay so let's first now try to understand how do we work around with this simple object so for example in case in javascript you have to access the property of this object all you need to do is write this dot use dot in case you want to modify it you can do it using equal to some languages different programming languages use hyphen some use cells so it, it depends on vary from language to language important for you guys is to understand that how do we access and how do we move around it so now i know how do we access it how do i modify it how do i delete it so for that we can say my detail dot city and if i now check my detail dot city it is undefined okay pretty good so this is good now you must be thinking okay this is how we access this simple one but how do we access this one an object inside object or an array right for that let's look at the other one so if i say my detail mult right so what you can see is let's look at first uh, address so dot address is in itself an object right so all you need to do in case you have an object is to use a dot so for example now right you can see this using dot 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 i am going inside okay now this is how and the same way you can change it also if you change it to uh, chandigarh uh, so it is here right now let's 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 see how do we okay we know how do we access objects object inside objects but what about salaries right let's look at salaries salary is an array multiple one right so zero one so first one if you want to access you can have it as zero so you can see month jan 10 21 and in case you want to access this object property you need to use simple dot so here we are using dot somewhere it results and in case you want to loop it you can loop it using the typical uh, for each map or whatever suits you right so that is how we normally access these different variables and modify them right and uh, normally what happens is that uh, once you are making some calls to the back end the data comes goes also as a text and come as a text right and in case our medium of communication is using json so how do we send this json as a text and modify it as a text so what we use is as follow there is a there is a there is an object named json let me say json string json dot stringify right and uh, what it does is it will create a string out of your object so you can see this it has id name company everything is now stringify right so json is available in 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 uh, javascript chrome and in python you might have something else in 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 uh, php you might have something else okay for example in php i remember we have json underscore decode json underscore encode so that's how you will encode your string you will make a json string if you want to send some data to the backend so let's say you get this response from the backend right how do you convert it back into a, a json object or a javascript object so for that what you can do is let's say json object is equal to again json dot parse and you say json string and if i now just log this you can see we already have this one so that's how you normally the interaction happens while you make a ajax call or something you send text you receive text and you're using json then this is how it works so i think now we understand in detail how you define a json file how do you access it its properties its uh, arrays its objects and how do you basically modify things so we have seen how do we kind of modify and uh, access or delete those properties but i think it makes sense that because an object can have this an object can have multiple properties how do we you revolve through or how do we loop through all of them for example this is the object our one right what if i need to 
and you know i don't need to hard code i just want to read through all properties so how you can do is you can say for um, for for prop in my detail right you just i'm just looping through those properties and i am trying to uh, just say that uh, you whatever is a property you just console log all right and i just pen so it says it gives me all properties id name company contractor this is what we have right this is how we access the 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 value of the the name property names but what about its values so for that what we can do is um, there's another way it is like in case you want to access any property you can say my detail prop okay so in this way it will basically get you those values so you can see there is console log one detail and if i look at uh, this so it is one of these right so this square bracket that's how another way of where you would can access this properties and you can kind of uh, uh, then uh, print those values right and then for example uh, what if let's look at uh, my detail uh, multi right now in this we have uh, array right salary salary right so how do we go through that right for example uh, what we can do is one of the traditional ways this for loop right which we have everywhere for i is equal to zero then i less than you know my detail multi dot salary dot length and then plus plus another way is uh, basically how we can do is we can have uh, my detail mult dot salary dot for each okay and then you can have uh, another function you can say number right and then you say not number it's a salary right and then you say console dot log salary okay so that is like another way of using a loop so it basically i loop through each entry right and i then it loops logs through all the things this is a callback function which is a concept of javascript for you you know just being a beginner you can assume it is just uh, looping through this array one by one so that's how we normally do the 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 array and object operation you can use different uh, operations different ways as per your programming language so now we have covered all the objects arrays basic properties and everything i think it makes sense to now uh, do cover one more thing which is like how do we validate a json or beautify or generate some data so maybe we will look at that in the next session so we have now covered all the operations which happen on json right whether it is reading the arrays objects loops and everything you know basic one i think it makes sense to cover one more thing which is i think is how do we you know validate whether it is a valid json or not so online you can have a uh, 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 there's one tool named json lint right which you can use to validate your json so all you need to do is is let's say i bring this up and paste here and i click on validate it's a valid json for example if i remove this comma then it clearly tells me that this is not a valid json right and um, it's it and it also tells you where the mistake is at that there is on line 11 there is one comma which is missing or for example if i have a an extra one then it tells you that okay there is an extra so json validator is very important in vs code also you can have your own then another is uh, json beautifier okay so for json beautifier this is the one which i normally refer for example uh, we will let's let's make it bit of unfriendly right and i say that this is my json right and this also does serve as a purpose of validator also for example if i write this then it can clearly show you that okay this is an invalid one right 
I do this and I say beautify so beautify so. and in, in that you can also have your beautification option right and uh, with how many tabs you need and even if you want to minify it it will do it minification so that's how normally you can do a linter you can use this jsonlint.com i'll put in the link in the resources the beautifier one more one more is so what if you have to generate those uh, uh, those dummy data json dummy data how do you do it is so for that you can use this json data generator right so i normally use this json generator right and uh, you you can you know this this is something like you need to this is a json generator where you can provide that okay how many how many uh, let's say address you want a state then then integer this value has to be between hundred and thousand and then phone has to be something like this right email has to be like this so basically you can here pass the kind of formatter so it's like you pass the function so for example I need an index which should be like keep on increasing one two three four repeat is five seven a kind of a loop this many entries age has to be an integer between 20 40 so all you need to do is provide your condition and just say generate and you have is your the data so these are I think three very handy tools which we I have been using to get around my dummy data beautification as well as linter and I hope it makes sense to you also Thank you everyone for uh, for completing this course. I hope uh, I make some sense. You are able to understand what JSON is. Uh, uh, you can take it up to the next level by using this, uh, you know, reading those files, JSON parsing and stuff, whatever you feel like. And, uh, and then maybe in our next courses, we'll try to bring on this, uh, we'll try to get something where we get more comfortable and easy with chrome and uh, and then and, and chrome cons developer console or some other ideas feel free to provide your feedback in your comments ratings and i would and in case you have any suggestion i'll be happy to accommodate and i'll try to work on them thank you thanks everyone for watching thanks so much keep sharing keep learning